and eleven thirty-four. Yep, there it is. Mom, twenty-two and eleven are thirty-three, not thirty-four. Yeah, but thirty-four makes the books balance. <laughs> you gotta know when to leave well enough alone. <laughs> They're on their way up. A honeymoon couple? Uh, how do you know? Well, he called her dreamboat, and she called him poopsie, and then they kissed and said, yum, yum. You're right. They're honeymooners. <laughs> Boy, customers. Well, what about their luggage? Uncle Joe's getting it. You, you check out the bridal suite. You get out the good silver and alert the kitchen staff. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Can we help Mrs. Bradley? Well, we could use some kindling for the fireplace. Do you boys like to chop wood? Well... Boys! We'd love to. <laughs> Greetings, folks, and welcome to the Shady Rest Home. Emily! Kate! Emily Hoskins! <laughs> oh, of all people! Oh, now it's Emily Mapes, of all people. Kate, this is Avery, my husband. We are on our honeymoon. Betty, you were right. How do you do it? Years of experience. <laughs> so nice to meet you, Avery. You Georgia peaches. You always did get the pick of the crop. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Emily and I have been friends ever since she'd left the Magnolia Blossoms and Honeysuckle Country and moved here to go to school. Do you know how long ago that was? Well, it was at Lee. <laughs> Well, let me put it this way. So you kids are on your honeymoon. Congratulations. <laughs> well, thank you, Kate. And I'll let you in on a little secret. Even at our age, marriage is exciting. Uh... <laughs> the only problem is, now when I carry my bride over the threshold, I need help. <laughs> Don't look at me. I only carry luggage. <laughs> well, darling, I'll go on upstairs and start to unpack. You and Kate must have a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> About 20 years worth, darling. Oh, Kate, you don't know how wonderful it is to see you again after all these years. It's wonderful to see you too, Emily. Well, enough for the small talk. How did you meet him? How did he get you to fall for him? How did he get you to marry him? And how come it took you so long? <laughs> Avery is quite a man, isn't he? Well, strictly from a spectator's point of view, I'd say yes. <laughs> tell me, tell me what happened. Oh, we met at a church social last year. He was a widower and I was a widow. And we were both lonely and... Uh, First thing we knew, we were married. <laughs> and you know something, Kate? It could happen to you, too. Me? No. I got children to raise, and I, I'm busy working 24 hours a day running this hotel. Besides, I, I think I'm too old to think about uh, romance. I had children to raise, too, and I was busy myself running that dry goods store Warren left me. And if you tell anybody, I'll deny it, but I happen to be seven months older than you. Oh. <sighs> Never think about age, but you happen to be eight months old. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I don't think I'm as romantically inclined as you southern bells. Okay, it has nothing to do with geography. It has to do with being a woman. Yeah, I know you mean well, Emily, but I know what's best for me, okay? Kate, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. Even in school, you were a stubborn young kid. Oh, I've changed plenty. Sure you have. Now you are a stubborn old kid. <laughs> but I'm not giving up on you. If you remember, there was one kid in school that was even more stubborn than you. I remember. You. <laughs> right. Well, then why not? You were older. <laughs> talk about mom's private life let's do it where it's not quite so public <laughs> gee mrs mapes if mom's unhappy she sure doesn't act like it 
She's so full of fun and she's always laughing and kidding around. That's right, Mom's one of the happiest people you ever saw. Now, yes, while she has you girls for company, but how's she going to be in three or four years when you've all gone off someplace and got married? Three or four years? Who's going to wait that long? <laughs> My point, exactly. It could happen tomorrow. Yeah. You know, Mrs. Mapes is right, Billy. When we're gone, it's just going to be Mom and Uncle Joe. And how many games of checkers can she play? <laughs> Poor Mom. Why don't you talk to her, Mrs. Mapes? I've tried. I love your mom just like you do, but she won't listen to me. Your mother is, uh, shall we say, strong-willed. We just say she's stubborn. <laughs> if she's going to find that road to happiness, you girls are going to have to help her. You mean help her in the direction of the right man? Exactly. So it's up to you. All right. I suggest we go straight to Mom and make her change her mind about finding a man. Oh, you got to be kidding. Us make Mom change her mind? Sweet, lovable, muley Mom. <laughs> oh, come on now. She'll listen to reason. Sure she will. So you do the talking. <laughs> Me? Wait a minute now. You know how muley Mom is. It's too late. You're stuck. I second the sticking. <laughs> Keep talking, Bobby Joe. Your suggestion is very interesting. Billy Joe and Betty Joe didn't think you'd listen, but I knew that if the facts were properly pointed out, you'd want to get interested in a man, because, you see, we've decided what you should do with your life. I see. And I was elected to make the suggestion. I have another suggestion. <laughs> Go ahead. But this one better get off the ground. Well, since the direct approach doesn't seem to work with Mom, and I speak from bitter experience, I say we trick her. Hey, you're right. We'll have her walking arm in arm with the right man before she even knows she shook hands with him. And we'll find him. How? Mom's not going to go out and try to hook a man on her own, and there are no fish in these waters. So what we've got to do is stock the pond. <laughs> hey, that's a wonderful idea. eligible traveling salesmen when we have plenty of bachelors in our neck of the woods. Sure, except we went over the entire list and every single one of them are either under 17 or over 70. <laughs> Uncle Joe, have you heard the cannonball whistle yet? Not yet. What are you girls aiming to do? We're going to prove it takes four to make a marriage. Four? Sure. An available widow and three anxious daughters. <laughs> Wait a minute. Do my ears deceive me? Are you girls trying to find a man for your mother? Sure, Uncle Joe. We've got to help her build a bright, happy future. What are you talking about? Your mother's the happiest woman in the world. No, yes. But what's it going to be like for her when we're gone? That's no problem. We'll just play more checkers together. <laughs> oh, Uncle Joe, we know you'll try to make her happy, but she'll need more in her life than checkers. Okay. On weekends, we'll play cribbage. <laughs> the cannibal's here. Come on. Charge. Goodbye, Uncle Joe. And when we get back, we'll be loaded with marriage bait. Wait, girls. Wait. What you're doing is dangerous. Wait. Crazy kids stirring up trouble. Bring some strange men around here. The first thing you know, one of them will take Kate walking in the moonlight and whisper sweet nothings in her ear. Low down skunk like that's just after one thing. My job. Look, we've got to work fast. The cannonball's due in five minutes and the salesmen are beginning to arrive. Ah, there's some likely looking fish in that school. But they won't stop at the shady rest. On the weekend, all the salesmen like to go on through to Pixley. Sure, there's more to do there. I know, but at the Shady Rest, there's so much less to pay. Now then, this weekend only, all rates will be cut in half for attractive, middle-aged bachelors and widowers. That'll get them. <laughs> but Mom would never stand for that. Well, she'll never know about it. We'll make up the difference ourselves. Now, how much have you got? Six dollars. But I've been saving up for a permanent at the beauty shop. Well, what's more important, a new hairstyle or your mother's happiness? In the future, don't call me Curly. <laughs> well, here's my ten dollars. And who wanted that adorable new green sweater anyhow? Oh, good. With this plus my nine dollars, we can stake Mom to a nice wide selection. Come on. Pardon me, sir, but how would you like to spend a delightful weekend at a breathtakingly beautiful resort hotel for a mere fraction of the usual rates. That sounds great. It is, if you qualify. Qualify? Uh, yes, sir. Are you married? 
No. Then you qualify. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Oh, it is. That is, if you qualify. Are you married? Well, yes, I am. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't qualify. <laughs> I've been a bachelor all my life. You qualify. <laughs> Oh, pardon me, sir, but how would you like to spend a fun-filled weekend at a lively resort hotel, and if you qualify, you... <gasps> Reverend Mims! Hi there. How's Mrs. Mims and all the little Mimses? Just fine, thank you. Just fine. Billy Joe Bradley, what's all this about a fun-filled weekend at a resort hotel? Oh, nothing at all. I was just kidding around. Reverend, it was very nice talking to you, and I'm looking forward to hearing your sermon next week. Yes, that might be a good idea. <laughs> Pardon me, sir, but how would you like to spend a fun-filled weekend? This is it, gentlemen. The Shady Rest Hotel. Go right on up the hill. That's where you'll find your hostess for the weekend, the charming and attractive widow, Kate Bradley. Don't be bashful. Talk to her. She's very friendly. And not only that... <laughs> yeah, quite a place. I, I hope the beds are good. Yeah, well, here we go. Thank you. How do you do? See, that's a great-looking lineup of hot prospects. And eligible. Every hand pick one of them. How in the world did you get them here? Uh, American know-how. <laughs> well, however you did it, you did it, and I'm proud of you. Now, if your mother will just show some... Isn't this wonderful, all these new guests? They're all men. And all single. What's that? Uh, I mean, they look like wonderful guests. Every single one of them. <laughs> oh, well, I gotta go fix dinner. Oh, no, Mom, we'll do that. You're gonna be too busy entertaining the guests. I am? Mm-hmm. Well, sure, Mom. We haven't had this many men, I mean, guests, in such a long time. And you've got to make sure that they feel right at home. I do? Of course you do, Kate. But you're not going to do it in that dress. I'm not? Well, no, certainly not, darling. You come on upstairs with me. I have a knockout of a dress for you. It's an original from Cleveland. What's wrong with this dress? Well, it's all right, Kate. It just isn't you. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed. Operation Manpower is underway. <laughs> How does she look? All I can say is I'm glad I met Avery first. She's putting the finishing touches on now. She'll be right down. Well, good evening, Miss Bradley. You know, I gotta admit you're right. <laughs> this hotel is loaded with charm. Well, if you think the hotel is loaded with charm, wait till you see the lady who runs it. Bradley, I'm everybody. I mean, good evening, everybody. I, I, well, you all know who you are. Okay, you look lovely. Lovely isn't the word for it. Oh, well, right. The word is wow. Oh, you're... Good evening, Mrs. Bradley. I'm Wilbur Spriggs. I'm in farm equipment. I'm Grover Woodstock. Uh, I'm in hay and grain. Well, I'm in luck to have such charming gentlemen as my weekend guests. My name's Tom Hartley, and it's a great pleasure to be the guest of such a charming lady. Thank you. Just look at Mom, Uncle Joe. Isn't it wonderful? Wonderful? Ridiculous. A flock of middle-aged roosters crowing over the only chick in the barnyard. Oh, Uncle Joe, let her enjoy herself. After all this time, her sociable instincts are beginning to show. You know, small wonder in that dress. <laughs> Dinner is served. Come on and get it, everybody. May I escort you into dinner, Mrs. Bradley? Well, oh, I... Just a minute. I thought I was to have the pleasure. Please, let's not overlook the delegate from the hay and grain business. <laughs> well, gentlemen, um, I have an idea. Uh, why don't we all go in together? Oh, well, that's a well, very good idea. Right. Come on, Uncle Joe, let's go eat. Oh, you go ahead, Billy Joe. I ain't hungry. Get my 
appetite back in the morning when I get rid of them fortune hunting vultures. <laughs> Carson, up here to put a stop to the carryings on you've been carrying on. Ah, uh, what's that? Now listen, this is a respectable hotel, and we don't put up with mashers like you pestering the elderly lady that owns this place. Oh, folly. The complaint is you've been following her. Hey, hold on. I don't know what you're talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Mrs. Bradley, the heavily made up woman with the gray hair. Oh, I forgot this week she's a blonde again. Now, wait a minute. We're on your type, you low-down gigolo. Take my advice. The next train goes through here in 20 minutes. Be on it. Look, if you don't get out of here, I'm gonna... You, 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 you and the rest of them scoundrels better be gone pronto. Remember, I'm packing a blackjack here and a heater here. You're not messing with kids, you know. This here is Bulldog Carson himself. Come on, Bulldog, back to the kennel. <laughs> Mr. Woodstock, I don't know what's been going round in my uncle's head, if anything, but please accept my apologies. Ah, oh, that's all right, Mrs. Bradley. I should have expected it. This whole deal was wacky from the start. Am I married or single? Reduced rates for bachelors and widowers? It's beyond me. Married or single? Reduced rates for bachelors? Why, those little rascals. They sure are, Kate. All them others and this one, too. No, no, Uncle Joe, not them. The girls. Why, they cooked up this whole thing to push me into romance. I could have told you that, Kate. I got an eye like a hawk. A minute ago, you were a bulldog. <laughs> Mr. Woodstock, would you mind meeting me on the porch in an hour? Sure, Mrs. Bradley, but... I'll round up the other gentlemen. We'll have a little powwow. Together, we'll strike a blow for the older generation. Come on, Uncle Jeff. Okay, Woodstock, I'm through with you. You can go back to sleep now. Come on. <laughs> go out and see what goes on in our house. I live with my sister and her teenage daughters, and they've been making all my important decisions for years. Now, my children are married and scattered all over the country, so they're forced to run my life by long-distance telephone. Collect. <laughs> <laughs> so then you understand what I'm talking about. And you'll go along with what I want to do tonight. Oh, you oh, bet. Well, sure. Why has it changed my mind about you? Any group of grown men who's scared to death of teenagers can't be all bad. <laughs> Say, where do you suppose Mother's been hiding all day? I don't know, but I sure hope she's out with those fellas. That'd be great. I hope she's been out with just one of them. That'd be even greater. Yeah. Hey, you know that tall one with the gray hair? I think he's Girl, really attractive. Girls, come quick. Your mom's gone plumb love loony. Oh, Uncle Joe, what's wrong with her? What happened, Uncle Joe? It's too brain shattering to describe. You'll have to come to the lobby and see for yourselves. Uncle Joe! <laughs> talking about? Mom well, isn't even here. Yes, where is she? Whoopee! <laughs> Happy New Year, boys. Did you miss me? Yeah. I'm good looking. <laughs> Say, what kind of a party is this? I want dancing, singing, revelry. Have a girl, Kate. Anything you say. Thanks, doll. <laughs> now, which one of you handsome, eligible gentlemen is going to get me some of that punch? How about you, Grover, honey? You're cute. <laughs> You're not so bad either, tall, gray, and boy, would you make a great husband. <laughs> it looks like Mom, and it sounds like Mom, but it's got to be somebody else. Oh, uh, you're okay, Katie, baby. You too, Wilbur. <laughs> you're Rudolph Valentino with the crew cut. You wow. and those eyes. They're dreaming. <laughs> Can that be Mom? Our mom? Sweet, wise, level-headed, sensible mom? It is. But there's nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about? No, you see, we're all having the same nightmare. Pitch yourself, you'll see. Ouch. Darn it. Come on, we better try and talk to her. Oh, you fascinating rascal. Sit out here. Mom, can we talk to you for a minute? Hmm. What'd you have on your mind, youngster? Uh, some other place, Mom. Yeah, like outside, about five miles away. Stand back, party poopers. <laughs> Let your mother enjoy herself. Please, 
Louise's mother? You were right. This is the good life. You know, if I weren't having so much fun, I'd spank you for not having told me about it before. <laughs> Come on, Tom. Start tickling those ivories loud and fast. You got it, Katie, baby. That's my kind of music, the Hooterville hop. Come on, everybody, let's hop. Come on. Mom, Come please, on, please listen to us. We'll be do the Hooterville hop and hop all the way to Pixley. But don't drag. That's it. Yo, oh, you boys are good. Mom's not acting at all the way we planned. She sure is unfair. Girls, we've created a spruced up, permanent wave, glamorous Frankenstein. How am I doing, Grover? Great. The way your girls look now, they wouldn't try to tell you how to run your life if you got on your hands and knees and begged them. Oh, now you got it. Swing it. Uh, come on, it's my turn. Come on. Oh, this right. is very oh, good evening, Mr. Carson. Good evening, Reverend Mims. What's all that noise in there? Well, Kate, me and some of the guests. Reverend Mims. Yes, I uh, just happened to be in the neighborhood, and I thought I'd drop by and see how you're all getting along. Oh, well, we're just getting along fine. Nice of you to ask. Well, be seeing you around. Good night. Katie, you're the greatest. Whoopee! Come on, fellas, let's make this place jump. Whoopee! Mr. Carson, just what is going on in there? Uh, would you believe it if I told you Kate and I guess we're rehearsing for the Hooterville Barbershop Quartet contest? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> would you believe it if I told you... Mr. Carson, your niece is one of the best-liked and most respected women in this community. Now, if there's something wrong in there, I want to help. Reverend Mims. <laughs> How nice of you to drop in. <laughs> What's new? <laughs> I'm glad you're so understanding, Reverend Mims, but I guess a man in your work must run into this sort of thing fairly often. Fairly often, every day. I've got four teenagers of my own. <laughs> it all worked out great. The girls know once and for all that Kate ain't interested in finding a man, right, Kate? Wrong. I'll be interested when the right man comes along, but I'm going to do my own finding. Well, tell me, Mrs. Bradley, do you think your trick worked? Will your girl stop trying to run your life? Oh, sure. It cost me a crick in the back and blisters on my feet, but they're going to leave me alone from now on. Yeah, they're cured all right. You can take my word for it. Mom, if you're going to stand out here like this, you need a sweater. <laughs> I'm fine. Mom, please, put it on. I'm fine. Mom, now put that sweater on. You're going to... Girls, I think I'm old enough to know when I need a sweater. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation.